Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got four big stories for you today and a live stream tonight, so I hope to see you guys all there. I am Nintendo Rubble Jance, and let's get right into the news. I don't want to waste any of your time. Uh, I would appreciate, though, if you would subscribe to the channel and all that jazz. Drop likes. Let's have some fun today, shall we? Our first story today uh, it deals with Pikmin Bloom. I actually had a chance to check it out today uh, because the story is that Pikmin Bloom is now available here in the United States on Android and iOS. Um, I went for a, a small walk today, not too far, you know, about half a mile. Uh, grew some Pikmin, had some fun. Uh, it's, uh, it's It reminds me of Pokemon Go in a small sense. Pokemon Go, I think, has a bit more action involved with it while you're walking. Uh, this one's more of a collect a few things and then just walk. And then once you hit certain walking miles, zones pull your pikmin out um at least that's what the game has been like so far maybe it does get more advanced uh the deeper i get into it again this is the first day it's been out so who knows uh but hey it's cute it's fun it's something that's at least got me back up and walking uh doing daily walks uh starting today i have another walk plan for tomorrow so we'll see what happens um i kind of stopped playing pokemon go years ago so uh we'll see how long pikmin uh, Pikmin Bloom sticks around with me, but I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. So hey, it's available now for free. Obviously, it's a free app that you can get on your phone. Well, unless you live in Europe, it hasn't released in Europe yet. Sorry, still no tentative date for that. So here's a bit of a interesting story. Laura Croft, that's right, the Tomb Raider herself is coming to Nintendo Switch, finally. Unfortunately, it's not the games you maybe hoped it would be, such as maybe the classic Lara Croft Tomb Raider games or the newer Lara Croft Tomb Raider games. Instead, there are actually a couple of spin-offs that have been announced for the 25th anniversary. These are actually older games, but what's cool about these spin-offs is they're actually extremely like well received. Fans seem to really love them and they reviewed super well. So at least while we're getting just spin-offs, we're getting good spin-offs. So here is the full news here. The 25th anniversary of Laura Croft and Tomb Raider has announced that Laura Croft and the Guardian of Light and Laura Croft and the Temple of Osiris will be coming to Nintendo Switch in 2022. So cool. I mean, we'll have to wait and see for more details on this, see actual Switch gameplay and all that, but um, these are kind of like isometric style games, which are, um, honestly, I really enjoy these style of games. So uh, I'm just happy to have more options for games on the platform, even though they're old. Pricing isn't announced at this at this point, at least at the time that I wrote the story down. So um, still, Laura Croft is coming to Switch. So that is something, at least. Maybe this could lead to more Tomb Raider stuff down the line. So Nintendo appears to have leaked the release date for Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Originally, I think it was supposed to come out either like December 3rd or December 8th, but then Nintendo announced that it's been delayed to the spring, and that was it. Nintendo hasn't actually given us any news about Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp since announcing its, well, late release date. That is until this. Uh, this is the uh, just a cell phone image of the Nintendo Switch eShop, and yep, there it is listed for April 8th. So that seems to be the date Nintendo's targeting. It technically hasn't been announced, but is listed on their eShop. So it's probably really the official date. It's also something that Nintendo might not mind floating out there in this way, because I'm not sure that they view Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp as like a significant major release in the same light as Pokemon Legends Arceus next year or, um, you know, Splatoon 3. There's a number of big games in 2022. So I could see them being like, hey, look, we don't need to give this the same treatment as those games because it's obviously not going to sell in the same vein of those games. So uh, I'm glad that we at least have an idea of when it's coming. Now we kind of can see a roadmap here. You know, we got our January game. We got our April game coming right after the end of the fiscal year. Uh, we'll have to see what, what's coming in March because we still don't know what big Nintendo games coming in March. They traditionally have a big game in March. So yeah, but um, I'm just glad that we now know. All right, this last story is really why I wanted to make this video because you see this game behind me, or really this is more of a movie poster, uh, Golden Eye 007. You guys remember the old movie with Pierce Brosnan, but more than that, do you remember the video game on the Nintendo 64? We haven't seen the original N64 Golden Eye since release due to a number of um rights issues there's been uh, uh there's essentially i think like 12 different companies that own 
some sort of copyright for this video game, which has prevented it from ever re-releasing. There was like a remake of it at one point that, you know, didn't really do it for most people because they really want that classic game to come back. And we have the Nintendo 64, uh, you know, system joining Nintendo Switch Online and giving us online gameplay. So all of us sort of want to see GoldenEye, and by the way, Perfect Dark as well, on the Nintendo 64 online service uh, so we can play it online. That would be an actually an enticing thing to potentially get people to want to purchase uh, the Nintendo Switch online service. But the thing is, it, it, it's like that impossible port, right? We're not going to get it. At least that's what I always thought until today. So this came over from on Reddit, but it actually uh, comes from a couple of different websites, including Eurogamer in Germany. So Eurogamers, you know, they're pretty legit. It says, Goldmine 007 has been taken from the Germany BPJM list of media harmful to young persons, which heavily restricted its sales in Germany. That was the original listing for the game was essentially, yeah, only very specific age groups could buy it and it really limited the sales originally. Uh, this review pro process happens automatically after 25 years. Notably, it hasn't been 25 years, okay? But in this case, the review has been actively requested prior to that date by one of Nintendo's European partners, which in this case probably acts as a proxy. Such a request doesn't come for free, and you wouldn't do it unless you plan something with your media. What they're saying is Nintendo is using a partner company to request the removal of this, um, this listing on the German version of the game, and they're paying money to get that removed. Nintendo would not be doing this if there wasn't going to be something happening with GoldenEye. Because why would you pay money for something that's never going to come back out? Which, by the way, Nintendo does is one of those 12 copyright owners of the game. Folks, for the first time in 20 years, we have realistic hope that GoldenEye 007, the original N64 game, will be coming back, even if it's to Switch, even if it's on the Nintendo Switch online service. And oh boy, would that be a major get for Nintendo. That would cause me to spend an extra $30 per year to play GoldenEye online with Eric and all of you guys would be amazing. Taking me back to one of the original FPSs on home console. Now, people can argue Perfect Dark is better, and that's totally fine. Perfect Dark is amazing. I want them both. Am I greedy for wanting both? No, and while Perfect Dark seems more likely because we already have Banjo-Kazooie, and obviously Nintendo and Microsoft work well together, so I can see them allowing Perfect Dark to come here. Also, that would be a great advertisement for Game Pass as they have a reboot of Perfect Dark in the works. Uh, yeah, GoldenEye 007 is the impossible, and it certainly seems Nintendo's paying money to remove an age restriction for a game that isn't ever been re-released. Why pay money to remove an age restriction unless you know you're bringing this game to the table? Folks, Nintendo it appears to be hinting that GoldenEye 007 will be coming to the Nintendo Switch online service. Just let this sink in. Let this moment in gaming history sink in. Now, I know you know a huge chunk of my audience maybe didn't grow up with the game and don't know what all the hype is. Let me tell you, this game came out back on the Nintendo 64, and back then, let's just say FPSs weren't very popular on home consoles. It was very difficult to translate first-person shooters, which still to this day are best played with like basically a mouse and keyboard. Uh, it was really hard to transfer that to um, a, you know, a, a console. It wasn't very often that it happened. Perfect Dark and GoldenEye being among the earliest that did it. So, and by the way, it did it really well. It, it was really well. I mean, it, it's one of the best games on the Nintendo 64. So, um, let's just say I might be willing to forgive Nintendo for every negative comment I've said about Nintendo Switch Online if this happens. Maybe that's too much bias coming out of my mouth. I don't care. I've been wanting to replay this game outside of the N64 ecosystem, outside of ROMs and emulators with proper online support legally. I've been wanting to do this forever. 
And if Nintendo found a way to make it happen, Nintendo, the company that got us Sora in Smash and worked around Disney. Which, by the way, getting Sora in Smash is easier than Golden Eggs. It's just, like, two companies you gotta worry about. Square, who isn't going to care, and then Disney. That's it. 12 for GoldenEye. But hot damn, am I ready to bring back one of the greatest classic multiplayer first person shooters of all time. Let's get the paintball big head mode going. Woo! You guys know what I'm talking about. You guys know. All right, folks. I'm Theta Robo Jazz from the Center Prime. Be sure to tune into our live stream. We have a stream tonight at 8 p.m. CT. You know we'll be talking, obviously, about everything that happened to the channel in the last few days. Uh, but beyond all of that, we actually have one story I purposely kept out of this video that we'll be talking about there because. I don't know, it's kind of a funny story more so than a serious one, uh, but it's still interesting just seeing the state of the way different platform holders are handling video games right now and censorship, but we'll get into that tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in. It feels good to end our week with a proper video, well, and live stream, but I'll catch you guys later. Peace.